Welcome back everybody, Chad Ferguson here, catfishedge.com, and I want to talk a little bit today about sonar unit, choosing a sonar unit, and what one of the most important factors is if you're going to outfit your boat with sonar. I get this question just about every day from anglers, you know, maybe they got a new boat, they're just kind of starting to get serious about fishing for catfish, and uh, you know, they, they ask me, you know, I, I, there's so many options out there so many different variables. What do I do? What, what do I buy? What do I have to have? What's important? And, uh, you know, there's a lot of variables to it. Certainly how much money you want to spend or can spend is one of the biggest factors. But I want to talk today about what I feel is the most important factor when you're choosing a sonar unit. So I'm going to jump up here in the Sea Arc Pro Cat 240 show you my sonar, talk a little bit about that, and uh, hopefully it'll help you if you're in the market getting ready to invest in sonar. So the sonar units that are on the market today, there's a lot of different options available. You have uh, 2D broadband sonar, which is the traditional down view like I have on my screen here. You have down imaging, which is a view down below the boat, provides a lot more detail than the traditional broadband sonar view, which is this right here. You're gonna get a lot more clarity. You're gonna get a lot more definition in what you're seeing down below the boat with the down imaging versus the 2D. And then you have side imaging, which is gonna give you a view on either side of the boat. You can look out um, a long way on either side of the boat, 150 to 300 feet, depending on uh, which type of sonar unit you have. You really can't get a whole lot of definition when you get out that far. Um, anything beyond about 60 or 75 feet, you're really not going to be able to see much detail. And then one of the other common views that you'll have on a sonar unit is uh, mapping, like I have here, where you can have you know the cartography, the uh, topographic map on your sonar unit. And then last but not least, the 360 imaging view. Now it's not going to pull up here, but the 360 imaging will give you a 360 degree view around the boat while the boat is sitting still, where the other sonar types require the boat to be moving for you to get a very good picture. Um, the 360 works sitting still and it gives you a 360 degree view around the boat. So what is most common and uh, people are going to use is the 2D sonar, the side imaging, the topographic map, and then the down imaging some. I rely most heavily on side imaging more than I do anything else. And then I would say secondary to that, the 2D broadband sonar and uh, the topographic maps kind of equally important. And then last but not least, the down imaging. The 360 imaging is really a specialized tool for certain situations. I rely on that 2D sonar and down imaging secondary and, and topographic map secondary to that side imaging view. And because the side imaging really gives me ability to see a lot of detail and to really identify fish and cover a lot more water than I'm able to cover looking at traditional down imaging or 2D broadband. So the most important factor when you're choosing a sonar unit, uh, in my opinion, is the screen size. And the reason behind that is, it's very rare that I'm using one of these views. I use multiple views in combination with each other most often. Um, I would say that probably less than 1% of the time I have a single view on my screen where I'm looking for something. Uh, the view that I use most often is this one right here, where I have the detailed uh, lake map pulled up, and then I have the side imaging down below that. That gives me the ability to look at the contours, at the river channels, at my GPS coordinates, where I can see uh, what's going on. You know, it's common knowledge, blue catfish are uh, typically structure-oriented fish. That's not to say you're not going to catch them off of structure, 
but uh, they very often uh, are structure oriented fish everybody calls them creatures of edges and ledges some people call the um, you know contours and stuff that run under the water uh, underwater highways and most often when I'm looking for blue catfish especially for big blue catfish I'm following some sort of structure um, and, and looking at those contour lines to find those fish. So I'm using the map to be able to tell where those fish are or, or where those contours are and then using the side imaging to really be able to cover a, lid, a large path of water and look for those fish. And then once I find those fish and I kind of get niched down into a general area, then a lot of times what I'm doing is switch into another view like this where I've got that 2D and uh, down imaging or switch into a view like this where I've got side scan, 2D and down imaging together or if I'm still trying to really stay on top of that structure and on those contour lines a screen like this where I've got all four going on and I can look at the side imaging, down imaging, 2D and at the map and really get where I need to be to get on top of those fish. So the most important factor in my opinion when you're choosing a sonar unit is the screen size. Typically when people go out they buy a smaller sonar unit uh, with a smaller screen the first thing they say is I should have got a bigger one. I should have got a, a bigger screen. I should have invested more money. I should have waited. My opinion is if you're not going to go all in and buy the biggest screen that you can get, I would say don't buy anything less than a 9 um, and preferably at least a 10 when it comes to screen size. If you're not going to go all in and do all that and you're going to invest in a sonar, a lot of times uh, what I recommend to people is that you just go and buy a basic 2D broadband unit where you can get that traditional 2D broadband view like you have on the screen here. I fished with that for years, always found fish. That gives you the ability to go out there and find them and you're not going to spend a bunch of money on stuff that is really not going to benefit you because of the screen size because the small screen it gets very difficult to really see what's going on under the water and really see that detail especially when you start getting in to looking at these multiple views like this and you're looking at multiple screens at one time it's just almost impossible on those smaller screens with the units the example I give everybody on this is to go out and um, pull up a, a video of an action movie. Well, we'll say, you know, uh, whatever. American Sniper is one that's out right now. So go pull up American Sniper on your phone and watch it on an iPhone or an Android and, and you know, all the action going on there and the shooting and everything. You're going to be able to tell what's going on. You're going to be able to see a lot. And... Uh, you know, you'll be able to get through it, but you're really not going to see a lot of detail. Well, if you take that same movie and that same clip that you're watching on that iPhone or Android and you pull it up on a computer and watch it, you're going to notice a lot of things that you don't notice on that phone screen. You're going to see more detail. You're going to see more stuff going on in the background and, and uh, you know, stuff that's not the primary focus of what's going on on the screen. If you take that same clip and you put it on a, a big screen TV in your house, you're going to see even more detail and, and even more of that stuff going on than you would see on a phone or a computer. And then if you go to a movie theater where the screen covers the whole wall and you're watching it in a movie theater, you're going to notice a whole lot more than you would notice on that phone or on the computer or on the TV. And that's a great example for screen size and what that does. So again, my opinion, the most important factor when choosing a sonar unit, screen size. Get the biggest screen size that you can afford. If you're really going to use it heavily, 
I'd say, again, at least a nine inch screen, preferably a 10, because the nine is really even kind of pushing it. It'll work great if you're just wanting running one view at a time, but if you start trying to run multiple views, it gets pretty difficult. I'm gonna do a whole lot more information on sonar coming up here in the future. Some tips and tricks for super tuning and tweaking your sonar unit, finding fish, how to use iPilot Link and all sorts of other techie stuff to help you go out there and locate and catch more and bigger catfish. Make sure you subscribe to the YouTube channel. Till next time, I'm Chad Ferguson, catfishedge.com. And make sure if you've got questions or comments, post them down below. Let me know. I'd love to hear from you. Thanks a lot.